between jobs out here uh, doing some fencing so um, what we got here building another pen um, for the horses for some training sheep for the dogs or for the rams or for whatever It'd be quite handy having this other pen here um, and as well as we can you know bring two mobs in at tailing um, leave one in here and one in this pen and then yeah run them through and keep them all separate quite nice so just got to strip out this old stuff here uh, not the posts but just the battens and wire and then we're going to replace this all with netting so uh, get into it and uh, yeah hopefully it doesn't rain it's not a very nice job to do when it's raining right so we've got it all stripped out other than this bottom wire which is our guide wire um, the issue we've got here, this post here, is not. So if we have the netting on this side, it'll come off this side of the post. This post is not quite in the right spot. Um, yeah. So what I might do is pull it out, bash it back in here. Oh, mm, it's a bit wobbly. Could do with um, replacing. And then same with this one here. This is on the wrong side because everything else is on the left hand side and it's a bit low as well. So we might pull that one out and put another one in on this side. Pull that one out. Right, so pretty crap, pretty crappy little posts. Um, I can't, I can't really use that one again. It's not big enough. Uh, that one's too small. We could use that one again. This is an intermediate post, so maybe bash that one back on this side. Move it along a wee bit. Um, but I will go and find another post to put just in here. Make that line straight. So we're just going to throw the rock spot down first, do that for the strainers. It's pretty hard and it's a big hole. Just to bash it in the rock spot on this hard ground. So throw this down. Get our level, make sure it's uh, plumb.
show me like one of your French girls. But you're not naked. Oh dear God. Please don't smash your fingers. Because I can see it happen. They'll be all mushy. And you'd flake out. And there'd be a lot of blood. Bit together. Not my favourite bit. What? Putting stuff back together. Ah, that's a good bit. You get to see progress. Shiny new things. What you doing? I put a post on there to cut it. So this is going to be my stay post, which comes out of the T block here. Up under there, it stops the post from leaning this way when you put tension on the fence. When do you have to have strainer posts? Pretty much at the end of every fence. So you strain them up so it keeps the keeps the fence tight if you've got them. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Holds the pressure. Yep. Extra strength. Sharpened your pencil. Yeah. So we do that. You sharpened your pencil. And then we chisel a hole in that post. Here. Yep. yep. Chisel a hole in there. About knee height. About that. Who's knee height? My knee height. <laughs> Just under halfway. Um. Yeah. We're well, gonna trim this off to make that flush against the post first as well. Uh -huh. and that's what the tea's for. Very good. Pardon? And that's what the tea is for. Yeah, because then that post goes in there and it backs against this little half round that I cut. And then uh, and then you bash it in. So grab a pencil. And I normally run a plane, just because I'm pedantic, a plane over this. Make sure it's all nice and flat and smooth but my plane is rusty and it got water in there and it's blunt so we are not doing that today. Ah, 
It's going to be a splintery corner. It's not that splintery. <laughs> this is how I do it anyway, to get that dead angle. So you just put your chisel on there, like so. Draw a line without it moving too much. Draw a line like that, and then you can just bring that line back to go right on the edge. There. So that's where we need to cut, and then you take a wee bit off there as well. And as soon as that's done, we'll lay it against the post again, draw a square on the post, and uh, we can cut that. Post. Make sure it's all lined up there. Draw a mark on. Shows you how un square, unparalleled my cutting is. Why? Well, look, it's not a rectangle. <laughs> oh, that's right. Not the end of the world. Boss might complain. Which boss? Comments. No, you. Oh, me. Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna complain. Yeah. These strainers are new, so picked them up well ten days ago. Strainers. This post. Oh. Strainer post. Um. What, what's the strainer post as opposed to a normal post? Well, that's a normal post. Like these here, intermediates. Oh, trying to post bigger. Or a stay post. Yeah. Right. You're learning all the terminology, aren't you? Yep. Um, so they're, they're still wet, which makes um, chiseling them easy. Simpler. So we just go around once like that. And then we go around again. Try not to get hammer clawed in the face. Who are you? Yeah. Mm. That wouldn't be pleasant. See, the other way to do this that I showed yesterday is um, with a hole saw or a drill bit and instead of creating a rectangle like this, you just put a circle in there, chisel it out and you use the point that's already on the post, the round point. Um, so you don't have to you know, sharpen like those ones over there. Post yeah. pencil. So you don't have to sharpen it and it just fits right in. Would that be the more modern way? Ah, uh, yeah, yep. Yeah, it's um, it's a lot quicker. That's for sure. So why are you doing it this way? Ah, uh, because this this post here wasn't. It was just an like you can buy them with straight ends. Oh. So um okay. Yeah, it's already like that. It was it's not Choice. not sharpened. So I'm just utilizing what we've got on hand. Do that so it slides in. And then 
That's what she said, eh? Yep. <laughs> Sharpen it so it slides in. Um, I don't know about sharpening it. And then we just bevel these edges. Bevel? Yeah. Sounds like an old man's name. Bevel? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like, I've, I've never met anyone called Bevel. Bevan Cross with Neville. Have you? Well, if we've got any Bevels on our subscribers, do let us know. <laughs> We're not taking the piss out yet. <laughs> Are we not? <laughs> so there oh, you go. Too big. Fits in there. Does it? Then when we put some <laughs> when we put the bash that in, mm -hmm. it will um force itself in there, Jenna. Will it? Uh-huh. G rated, Alistair. Yeah. We'll just trim it a little bit, eh? Oh, how about that? It was a little large, wasn't it? Always takes some manipulation to get in. Some fine tuning. Yeah. I'm probably doing it wrong anyway, so. What makes you say that? <sighs> oh, you always get those people in the comments that tell you you're doing it wrong. Isn't it great to know when you're doing things wrong, Alistair? Sometimes. Depends what headspace you're in, I suppose. Depends. Depends on so many things. Look at all those rocks. Nice soil, though. Well, it's only, there's only rocks in here because it's in the heat yards. And put, they've put gravel in here before. Mm. That's why these kind of stays aren't that common in Canterbury. That's why I didn't know much about them. I was brought up in rocky land. Because um, people are too lazy to dig holes in the rocks, so... Ooh, I said it. Oh, Bloody North Islanders. Yep. We just don't like to do unnecessary things. But you see, it's easier to... Is it? It's easier to tie. <laughs> it's easier to tie your wire off. How's that rock going for you, though? Yeah, getting it out. <laughs> it's easier to tie your wire off on a post. I think that has this kind of stay in it because you can actually, like, I don't have to put this in here now. I can tie my fence off on that post, and then once it's all tied off, I can put the strainer in, other uh, stay in. So you can tie it off when it's completely clear. You don't have any other obstructions. Um, which actually, before I put this in, I need to run that fence through. So, we'll leave this. Um, <laughs> the lazy people of Canterbury, on the rocky plains, not this beautiful soil, what kind of stays do they do instead? It's a box stay. So like the ones here, down the end. So you bash two posts in, not sure where I'm looking to be honest. Just here, the end of this strain that we've got to do here. Oh, right. So you bash two posts in, put a post in between them, and then you tie that up with wire. Yeah, that's what I think of as a stay. Yeah, so this is a box stay for a turkey perch. Because <laughs> turkeys like to perch on them and shit everywhere. Righto. But they don't perch on the angle ones. Yeah, there's no weapon perch. So. Yeah, but when, but when you put your netting around here... So it's a bird perch? Yep. Yeah. A Jenna perch. No. When you put your netting around here, you've got to deal with these wires, and they're always in the way, and it's just a pain, so... Preferences. Right, we'll do this. Then... Cut the dropper out. The what? The dropper or the connecting piece of netting that runs up and down, because that's going to be in oh. the in the way. The vertical. Yep. It's going to be in the way of my termination oh, knot. My termination knot. We to need to just write a glossary for all these terms. Why? Because it's not making sense. <laughs> Am I talking gibberish? 
Yeah. Imagine what I sound like to the overseas people who are watching on the channel. They probably understand you better than I do. Oh, well, that's comforting, isn't it? Is it? That my followers <laughs> understand me and you don't. So now when we come around here, we've got quite a bit of space to do a knot. And termination knots on knitting are one of the worst jobs. They're just fiddly and pinchy and horrible and I don't like wearing gloves, so. Mm. So you get out the pans and... Could wear my gloves. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good, thanks. Yeah? Yeah. Sure? Mm-hmm. I'm fine. Not the style you're looking for? No. These are gardening gloves anyway. It's supposed to be gardening. Yeah, what are you doing? Filming know. me? I'm doing with my life. So as I was saying before, before the GoPro went flat, um, yeah, got this fence netting here all strained up. And as you see here, that stay will just fit in between these bits of netting here. So yeah, we'll show you how all uh, this goes together. So this goes in the hole. So there we have it, that's tucked nicely into there, so no spiders can get in there, it's all nice and tight fit. And then down here we mucked up a bit, we've dug the hole a bit deep, so put two of those in there. But um, yeah, it'll be fine. So now we've just got to try this netting off, this one here, tie it off down that end, tie it off here, and uh, strain it up in the middle. Yeah, and we'll be well on our way to uh, to getting this job done. So we shot down to Rangura farmlands and Wrightsons and got some more gates. Um, three gates and some more netting and some permanent wire strainers for this job. So let's roll this out.
Right, we'll uh, swing some gates in the morning or tomorrow, and uh, yeah, that'll be this job done. But we, uh, I need to make sure this gate shuts so Rodney doesn't get out. Um, first things first, tomorrow we're going to probably bring these ewes in and sort them all out for prelim drenching, uh, prelim minerals and stuff. Um, yeah, we'll get all them done and then uh, carry on with this with this fencing. So that video will probably come out before this one. Hopefully, yeah. Right, we'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. We've um, done all the wire work on this fence. So we're just going to swing these gates. Got the old Makita drill. Um, yeah, and use these blocks to set the gate up on to get the right height. So I'll show you how, yeah, how I go about swinging a gate. make sure it's sitting right. So we've got good overlap on each end if that's what we want. And then you've got to think about the way, you've got to, got to think about the way that the gate's going to swing. So this one's going to swing out and around and hit the power pole there, make a bit of a wing to get stock in here if we need to. So it needs to be um, sitting, the hinge is sitting halfway along the, halfway along the post. So then when it swings out, yeah, it all it won't obstruct anything. So that's what we've got there. So we'll uh, drill some holes and throw some gudgeons in. So just going to drill some uh, initial pilot holes, pretty much. So uh, that's where the the gudgeons will start off at. So what I do is just go hard up against there, and then the gate will literally lift ever so slightly so we do that on both of them and thinking that the end of the gate is going to drop when um, when we put pressure on here so we want this gudgeon here to be slightly slightly higher so slightly off to the right just the wee bit so we've got our marks we'll take the gate off and drill them properly And then this one here is an anti-twist gudgeon, so which means it's got this other little piece on the bottom which stops the whole gudgeon from twisting. So you need to drill two holes. So we just take the nut off in one of the washers. Run this nut right in. Make sure it's up and straight up and down. Give it a bash. Marks where your uh, second hole has to be. That'll be enough of that. So we're just using a screw and gadget at the bottom. And uh, so we need to change our bit, make sure the hole's slightly smaller. Make sure that'll be enough. Yep. So we start it off with a hammer.
go, all swung. It's, um, there's a bit of a rise here. I wanted it quite low because there's going to be lambs, using lambs in here, so I don't want them pushing under the gate. But then, uh, yeah, there's a bit of a rise just here, so it does drag a wee bit, but just lift it up. Bring it around. And uh, once I shift my spinning jenny, it'll uh, close onto that pole there. Should be perfect. Right, two more to go. And then we can let Rodney in here and uh, go and do our sheep work. So there we are, we're all finished. Got our gate swung. One, two, three down there. And then uh, oh, I've still got to tidy up these with grinder. Just cut them off and uh, whack them off so they don't puncture any stock when they come through. So there's a couple of four of them to do. Yeah, I just got to get the horses into here and uh, we will do some sheep work. I've got some sheep work to do, so I might put those ewes in here too. Um, yeah, so we'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.